hope I haven't kept you waiting. Yes, this is the crime club. I'm the librarian. Murder makes a mummy? Yes, we have that story for you. Come right over. <laughs> chair by the window. Comfortable? The manuscript is on this shelf. Here it is. Murder makes a mummy. The very absorbing story of a corpse that wouldn't be bound by the rules. Let's look at it under the reading lamp. There are some people in this world who just can't be satisfied. One of them was Barney Crawford, son of Chief of Police Crawford. For most young men, that would have been enough. But not Barney. Oh, no. Barney wanted to be an Egyptologist, too. It was early one afternoon, and Barney was feeling very much at home in the Egyptian room of the local museum. He was having a wonderful time, explaining the wonders of a dead civilization to Janice Turner, his fiancée, who, at the moment, was sorry the civilization was not only dead, but buried as well. Great, mysterious Egypt. Cradle of civilization. What accomplishments. The pyramids, mummification, the Sphinx. Oh, it's such a beautiful day. I'll bet there are some people who are really enjoying it. Look, here in this case is the scarab. To you and me, an ordinary beetle. But to the ancient Egyptians, a god who is... It's pretty. Of course. It's solid gold with emerald eyes. Now, that would make a lovely pin on my new dress. Yeah, Let's go on, Janice. There's something in that case over there I want you to see. I'll probably never get over it. Yes, sir. One of the marvels of all time. The mummy. How do you do? Let's read what it says on the card. If you must. This mummy is unknown, but is believed to be the remains of Ra Marduk, the son of Shishak, pharaoh of the 22nd dynasty. My goodness. As expensive as that? 22nd dynasty. Janice, don't you realize that's almost 3,000 years ago? Barney... I'm sure the ancient Egyptians were a great people. Great? They were tremendous. But I never knew they wore rubber heels in those days. Why, they had inventions that... Te- huh? What did you say? I said, I never knew the Egyptians wore rubber heels. Well, of course they didn't. Whoever said they did. Don't argue with me. I'm just looking at the feet of this mummy, where some of the wrappings have come off. Holy mackerel. That is a rubber heel. Come on, Janice, we better send for my father. This might be a murder. And that's the whole story, Dad. We were all right until Janice noticed the wrappings that had come loose. And they're as big as life, Chief Crawford, with a black shoe with a rubber heel staring me in the face. Well, yeah, we'll soon find out who it belongs to. Now, here comes Sergeant Bailey. Uh, Chief, the coroner's all through with a step. Good, now we can go to work. He says the fellow was killed by a knife in the back. Uh-huh. Where's the knife? Well, there's no sign of it, sir. Not yet. Did you find any identification on the body? Not a thing, Chief. But the killer left all the labels in the dead man's clothes. Okay, run them down. Yes, sir. I can save you a lot of time, Dad. Well, sure you can, Barney. Now, why don't you and Janice go someplace pleasant, huh? That's a wonderful idea. We'll do something about it right no, now. No, wait, Janice. Dad, I think I can identify the dead man. What? Yes. He was Carter Baldwin, an excavation engineer. I've seen his picture in the papers in connection with Egyptian expeditions. What do you mean, Egyptian expeditions? He used to dig into the tombs of the ancient pharaohs. What a way to make a living. Oh, Chief. What's the matter, Bailey? There's something I forgot to tell you. The coroner said this guy's body was embalmed. Embalmed? Oh, what? That means the murderer must have embalming facilities. Well, thanks for the tip, son. I... Never figured that out for myself. Good heavens, I didn't think it was true, but... Uh, Now, what do you want? I'm John Lawrence, the curator of the Egyptian section. My assistant told me the police were here and that the body of a murdered man was... It was, Mr. Lawrence, in this mummy case. But that's impossible. There was a mummy in this case when I received it this morning. This morning, eh? About six hours ago. I, I, I can't understand it. Where did it come from? From Robert Prentice, the millionaire jeweler. He's one of our most generous benefactors. More than half the exhibits in this room were donated by him. I see. Dad, well, Dad, would you mind if I asked Mr. Lawrence a question? You? Now, now, see here, Barney, this is police work. Why don't you and Janice... Mr. Lawrence, did you examine this supposed mummy when it was delivered to you? Why, uh, 
No, but I can explain... Yet you allowed it to be put here for the public to look at. I'm sorry. It was against the rules of the museum. But, gentlemen, I have so many duties, and this morning I was unusually busy. With what? We're setting up a new filing system in my office. Please understand, Chief. Mr. Robert Prentice has given us thousands of dollars worth of Egyptian relics. If it had been anyone else... That's no excuse, Lawrence. This is the first time, positively the first time, I've allowed anything like this to happen. B- believe me... Yeah. Bailey, yes, sir. you and the boys stay here till you hear from me. Get this building a throw going over. Okay, Chief. Where are we going, Dad? Robert Prentice's house. What do you mean, we? Well, this is a subject I know something about, and I thought if you ran into something that was over your head, I might all be able to... All right, all right, let's go. Oh, Chief Crawford. Yes, Janice, I suppose you want to trail along, too. Well... well sure, why not? You found a corpse. Come on, come on. We'll, we'll make this a family affair. <laughs> Now, wait a minute, Mr. Prentice. Relax for a How minute. How can I, Chief Robert? Think of my position. A reputable businessman, a figure in the community. All I want to know is why... I donated that mummy to the museum, and now you say it's been replaced in the body of a murdered man. What will people think? I can't worry about that now. Where did you get that mummy? I bought it from Professor Morton, an Egyptologist. Where did he get it? He brought it back from Egypt several weeks ago. Professor Morton, eh? Huh? Barney, did you ever hear of him? Oh, I don't recall offhand, Dad. Neither do I, Chief. I can assure all of you, Professor Morton is a scientist in good standing. I've had many dealings with him in the past. I don't doubt it. But about this mummy, what proof have you got that you bought him? I'll show it to you. It's right here at my desk. A bill of sale signed by Professor Morton. Would you like to see it? I think so. One sarc... Cophagus. Period 1000 to 900 B.C. Dad, is that all it says? That's all, Barney. Nothing about Ra Marduk, son of Shishak? Ra who, son of what? Oh, I guess in the excitement of the museum, Janice and I forgot to tell you. You see, there was a card. Naturally, Mr. Crawford, since Professor Morton had no positive proof that the mummy was that of Ra Marduk, we couldn't put that statement on the bill of sale. Well, then actually, you don't know what you bought, do you, Mr. Prentice? Frankly, I didn't take the wrappings off to look. Then for all you know, it might have been the body of a murdered man. Now, see here, Chief Robert. Aren't we carrying this a bit too far? How well did you know Carter Baldwin? I didn't know him at all. I'd heard of him, but I never met him. Why didn't you ask Professor Morton about him? He might be able to give you some vital information. Such as? I couldn't say. But Morton and Baldwin went out on several expeditions. It was a close professional relationship. The kind that might lead to murder? One never knows what will lead to murder. Yes. But Professor Morton never impressed me as a man of violent moods. We'll see. All right, Mr. Prentice, I'm sorry we bothered you. No trouble at all. Anything I can do to help. We'll let you know. Come on, kids, we're going for another ride. Let's hope this thing doesn't turn out to be a merry-go-round. Professor Morton? Yes? I'm Chief of Police Crawford. Chief of... Oh, have I done something wrong? That's what we're here to find out. And, uh... These people? My son, Barney Crawford. How do you do, sir? And I'm Janice Turner. I'm so glad to meet you. Come in, please, won't you? Now then. Oh, Barney, look at this place. It's like a museum. Thank you, Miss Turner. Everything you see here is an authentic relic of old Egypt. Oh, but forgive me. I have no right to call them relics. They are living things. This vase, for example, once adorned the palace of Cheops, pharaoh of the fourth dynasty, one of the builders of the great pyramids. It's beautiful. And this solid bronze bin. Oh, when you two get through with your tour of inspection, I'd like to ask you a few questions, Professor, if you won't mind. Oh, oh, yes. I'm very sorry. Uh, what can I do for you? Tell me about the mummy you sold to Robert Prentice, the jeweler. A fine specimen. And Mr. Prentice is a fine gentleman. Why didn't you want to certify the mummy belonged to Ra Marduk? Ra Marduk? Uh, who was he? Well, he was a... Yeah, you tell him, Barney. Well, Ra Marduk was the son of Shishak, pharaoh of the 22nd dynasty. Oh, yes, I know Shishak intimately. But Ra Marduk... Now, see here, Morton. You told Prentice the mummy might be Ra Marduk's. Did I? Professor Morton, did you or did you not sell a sarcophagus to Robert Prentice a few weeks ago? Of course it was my latest acquisition. With the body of Carter Baldwin in it? Carter 
Baldwin? Oh, now, don't tell me you don't remember him either. Mm, I wasn't going to, Chief. Uh, Carter and I were... Uh, were what? Well, we were uh, associates. And you didn't like him, did you? He was the worldly type. Not very likable. You don't kill people for that, Professor. Was he murdered? Yes, he was. Oh, Barney, Chief. What is it, Janice? Look what I found. The most wonderful collection of daggers. Uh, daggers, did you say? Where? On this table. Look at them, as sharp as razors. Well. I'm really proud of this collection, Chief. It's the rarest in the world why some of these daggers have been traced back. Save the, the lecture, Morton. I'm taking them all down to headquarters. Oh, but you can't. They're priceless. They're replaceable. We'll take good care of them. Oh, dear, this modern world. Why must you take them away? Well, one of them might have bloodstains on it that don't go back 3,000 years. Let's go, kids. Oh, my. Stick close to the house, Professor. We might need you later. I won't go away, but I don't understand why you... Chief Crawford, you don't think that sweet old man is a murderer, do you? Maybe. Oh, just because he had those daggers in his house. Good heavens. Dad, haven't we overlooked something? Uh, what now, Barney? The mummy. Well, what about it? Carter Baldwin was found in a mummy case. Now, where's the mummy that was in that case when Robert Prentice gave it to the museum? Where? Yes. How do we know Morton didn't substitute the body of Carter Baldwin for the mummy before he sold it to Robert Prentice? Barney, I don't believe it. What do you think, Dad? You mean Prentice gave it to the museum without knowing what was in it? That's right. Yeah. On the other hand, how do we know the switch wasn't made by John Lawrence, the curator? That's what I say. Lawrence was in the best position to do it. And if you ask yeah, me... Yeah, Lawrence was the last stop on the line for that sarcophagus. Why didn't he check it before he put it in a room for public exhibits? He didn't have to. He knew what was under those wrappings. Uh-huh. Well, I'm going back to the museum for a talk with that curator. Dad, would you mind if Janice and I didn't go... Uh Oh, that would be a pleasure, Barney. You uh, call me at headquarters later. I'll uh, give you a first-hand report. Now, Barney Crawford... Janice, I wonder if Morton might have an extra mummy lying around. Shall we go back and ask him? No, dear. We'll go forward towards the back of the house and look for a cellar door. <laughs> When, Barney, if you need another hairpin. No, thanks. This'll do. I still think we're going about this the wrong way. Be patient, Janice. I'll have this door open in a minute. That's not what I'm talking about. Now, instead of looking for a mummy, we should be looking for a motive. I told you that comes later. Hmm, but a motive, dear, usually points to a murderer. Oh, a dozen people can have motives. Ah, here goes the lock. Now to open this door without making too much noise. So far, so good. Let's get down those steps. Now, you go first. I'll close the door after me. Oh, where are you? It's pitch black in here. Wait a minute. I'll get my cigarette lighter. How's that? It gives light, but very little comfort. Here, take my arm. We've got a lot of exploring to do. Ooh, this is the eeriest cellar I've ever seen. Just walls and corridors. Pretty queer for a private house. Well, we've got no right to expect anything else. Professor Morton is an Egyptologist. There's an open door, Janice. Let's see what's in that room. But that doesn't make him a murderer. Why, that sweet old man must cry every time he accidentally steps on a bug. Oh! Barney! What's the matter? Look, those animals all over the room. Oh, those. <laughs> they won't bite you. They're only bronze figures. There's some cats. There's a bull. Over there on the shelf, some falcons. That bull's the fiercest-looking thing I ever saw. And in this light... Barney, what's the idea of the menagerie? Well, the ancient Egyptians worshipped these animals as gods. They must be priceless. I wish they were somewhere else. Ah, ah, ah. Here's what I'm looking for. What? All those mummy cases. One of them might contain... Wait a minute. Barney, why did it blow out the light? Shh, listen. Oh, someone's closed the door. We're locked in. Must have been the professor. Hey, let us out. Bang on the door. I am. Bang, Bang, on, the... Oh. Bang on the door, Barney. I don't hear you doing it. I am. Yes. Oh, I'm afraid it's useless. What do you mean? Well, the door's made of solid stone. Here, wait till I light my lighter again. Yeah. And look at the walls. All stone. 
Just like the inside of an ancient Egyptian tomb. I'm thrilled. What are we going to do? I don't know. It looks like I've outsmarted the two of us. But good. Barney, how much longer are you going to open and close mummy cases? This is the last one, Janice. Well, no mummy. Thank heavens. All I need now is a mummy to cheer me up. You know, your father should have arrested that... That Professor Morton. Oh, have you changed your mind about him? Barney, what do you think he'll do with us? I don't know. After we're dead, do you think he'll embalm us and sell us to the museum as mummies? What a thought. Did you say embalm? Yes, but I'd rather forget it. That's it, Janice. If Morton killed Carter Baldwin and wrapped up his body as a mummy, then he must have embalmed him. And if he did... Don't tell me you're going to start hunting for the embalming apparatus. Uh Uh-huh. Oh, Barney, not now. Janice, I'm sure it'll be around here. I want to get out of here. Barney, if we don't find a way out, then I promise you I'll go out of my mind. Now, please, dear, take it easy. How can I with all these animals surrounding me? They're only bronze figures, darling. And that bull standing there in the middle of the floor and staring at me, just staring at me. I'd like to poke my fingers into his eyes. Oh, look, honey, please, will you listen? And I will. What? What was that? I don't know. I'm afraid to look. Janice, you darling... You touched a spring in the bull's eye, and and the wall opened. Does that mean we're free? It means something. Let's see. Oh, Barney, it's not an outside wall. No, it just leads to another room. And there's another bull standing on a platform. That, darling, happens to be a cow. Well, I don't care. And if my guess is right, it's Hathor, the ancient Egyptian cow goddess. This is no time to get technical. I was only trying to explain, Janice. Explain us out of here. Is this room a solid ball, too? Yeah. Seems to be. And it's outfitted like an ancient sacrificial chamber. Sacrificial? Oh, Barney. Janice, come on. What are you going to do? Walk us through a solid wall? I'm going to poke my fingers into the cow's eyes. Maybe the same magic will work twice. Oh, sure. Just like in the movies. (gasps) Barney. It's open. Let's not stop to admire the scenery. Oh, I never thought a hole in the wall would be so beautiful. Say, there's a flight of steps. Yes, up to the professor's living quarters. Dear professor, how I'd love to wrap him up. All right, but take it easy. We may have to take him by surprise. Nothing would give me greater pleasure. Yes. And I hope we scare the pyramids out of him. We'll have to be very careful now. You think he might have a gun? Maybe. Is he there? I don't see him. Let's not get frisky. He might be in one of the other rooms. Oh. What's that? Only the telephone. Let's get outside, Janice. The professor should be coming in here to answer it. Hmm. Nobody home. Unless he's got an extension upstairs. Come on. I'm going to pick up the receiver and listen. Nobody on the line. Professor's out. He's run away. Yes. Well, I better call Dad at headquarters and tell him about it. And while you're giving him an earful, tell him how that sweet old man locked us in an airtight vault and left us to suffocate. I'll give him a full report. Hello, police headquarters? Chief Crawford, please. This is his son. Oh? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I'll try in there. Thank you. Goodbye. Well? Dad's still at the museum. Then that's where we're going. I want to hear tell him about Morton right away before that murderer has a chance to go too far. Hey, Bailey. Bailey! Yes, sir. What are you standing around for? I told you to turn this place upside down to get every man working. Oh, Dad. <laughs> Well, what do you want, Barney? I tried to get you at headquarters. He got away. John Lawrence got away. Slipped right through my fingers. Where do we tell you what we've Not been now, Janice, please. What about Lawrence, Dad? Well, we got here right after closing time. That curator was not in his office, so we decided to look here in the Egyptian room. And, of course, you... Yeah, there he was with his nose stuck halfway into one of those mummy cases. He took one look at me, dropped the lid, ran out of the room on the other side. We haven't been able to find him since. What about the missing mummy, Dad? That, too. We've searched this building from roof to cellar. Every mummy case that's supposed to be empty, every closet, the barler room, we 
Now we even check the furnace. But no mummy. I see. Bailey! Yes? Get headquarters on the phone. Tell them to send out a nationwide alarm. I'll get this guy, Lawrence, if it's the last thing I do. Ooh, your pop's really in a huff. But we should have told him about Morton anyway. Come on, Janice, we've got things to do. What kind? It's 9 o'clock and the public library closes at 10. We'll have to hurry. What are we going to do with the public library? What are we going to do? Some reading, of course. Barney, will you stop being mysterious? Now, why did you drag me all the way here and to the section with the dustiest books? Ah, here it is. What? A history of the pharaohs. Oh, no. Now, what's that got to do with the murder of Carter Baldwin, a 20th century excavation engineer? Shishak. Shishak. Will you stop the baby talk and answer my question? Shishak, pharaoh of the 22nd dynasty, the father of Ramar Duke. Remember? No, dear. I wasn't there when it happened. Ah, here it is, page 90. And it would have been a wonderful thing for all of us if Morton hadn't been there either. Shishak. Hmm. Shishak. Ramar Duke. Oh, what names to hand down from father to son. Boy, how those people must have hated each other. Janice, we've been chasing all over town for nothing. Hmm? Shishak never had a son by the name of Ramar Duke. Someone pulled a fast one on the museum by sticking a phony label on the mummy Robert Prentice donated. Professor Morton. Janice... You are absolutely the cleverest girl I've ever known. No, he tells me. Remember how you argued with me about looking for a motive instead of a mummy? I'll never forget it. Why, you were right. That's what we should have done from the start. Come on. Wonderful. Where are we rushing to now? To the home of Carter Baldwin, the murdered man. I'd like to poke into his private papers, if they're still around. <laughs> Barney, what goes? Not a thing, Janice. I've gone through every paper on this desk. Mm, Baldwin may have had other hiding places. Why don't we turn on the room light? Well, the cigarette lighter will have to do. We're less apt to be seen from the outside. Mm, yes, darling. But suppose the well runs dry. Oh, then we'll... Mm, what's this? Discover it? This book on the table. The Great Jewel Robbery. Barney, you're not going to read it now. No, dear. I did that once before, some time ago. It's very interesting, and I think it solves our case. Barney, you sure you're all right? I'm perfect. This book tells me all I want to know about the murderer and his motive. I knew it. Too much Egyptology. Listen, I'll tell you the story. It's about a band of thieves that became very rich, plundering the tombs of the Egyptian pharaohs. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of those tombs are studded with emeralds, rubies, and other precious stones worth millions. Go on. I'm beginning to see what you mean. Well, legally, those stones belong to the Egyptian government, and excavators are duty-bound to turn them over to the authorities. But this gang smuggled the stones out of the country. Yes. Then, posing as Egyptologists, they transported the mummies and other contents of the tombs and either sold them or donated them to museums. Was Carter Baldwin mixed up in that kind of well, a he might have been. He was an excavation engineer, and he and Professor Morton... Barney. What's the matter? Kill that light. There's someone at the front door. Let's get behind the sofa. Stand as you are. What? Don't turn around. And don't turn off that flashlight or we'll shoot. I see here. Put your hands over your head. That's a good boy. Keep him covered, boys. I'm going to frisk him. Yeah, just as I thought. A gun. All right, Janice, you can put the room lights on. Janice. Just keep facing that wall. I'll tell you when to turn around. Now. Why, it's Robert Prentice. Surprised, honey? Well, aren't you? Not anymore. Well, Prentice? I have nothing to say to you, Mr. Crawford. Oh, come on now. Let's not be coy. What did you expect to find in Carter Baldwin's wall safe? I said I have nothing whatever Evidence, to say. wasn't it? Evidence that you and Baldwin were robbing the tombs of the Egyptian pharaohs. Don't be ridiculous. It's quite a racket, wasn't it? Baldwin explored and plundered, and you, Prentice, the fashionable jeweler, sold the precious stones to innocent purchasers. Well, why did you kill him? You accusing me of murder? Why not? It's the truth, isn't it? I should say it isn't, young man, and if you want more careful of what you say to now me, I'll... here, Prentice. It's the end of the line. Would you like me to tell you what mistakes you made? Mistakes? Number one. Showing my father that bill of sale for a sarcophagus. I bought it. A legal transaction. Number two. Telling the museum the mummy might have been that of Ramar Duke, son of Shishak. Professor Morton gave me that information. Without putting it on the bill of sale? I didn't want his assumptions. I wanted facts. And he gave them to you. But he said nothing about Ramar Duke because he knew that Shishak had no son by that name. Then he lied to me. I bought that mummy in good faith. You're so eager to find a murderer that I suggest... There's still a third mistake. You told my father that you'd never met Carter Baldwin. 
Now, who told you about his wall safe? His ghost? That does it, doesn't it? I knew we'd get you eventually. It was just a matter of time. <laughs> Well, Janice, Prentice just made a full confession to Dad. Is it worth listening to, Barney? Well, that depends on if you care. Baldwin was going to cut Prentice out of the racket, so Prentice killed him. And had him embalmed. Who did that, Barney? An undertaker's assistant. The fellow's answering a lot of Dad's questions right now. But, Barney, why did Morton lock us in that vault? Well, he didn't know we were there. He went out of the house and simply closed the door to his storeroom, and we just happened to be in it, that's all. And it would have been that's all for both of us. If I hadn't made a bullseye... Or if I hadn't made a cow's eye... I'm going to ignore that, Barney. <laughs> but what about uh, John Lawrence, the curator? Well, I knew he was innocent the minute Dad told me what Lawrence was doing in the Egyptian room. He was looking into a mummy case, wasn't he? Yes. And obviously, he was looking for the missing mummy. Now, if he'd been the murderer... He'd have known where he'd hidden the mummy, of course. No, 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 dear. He'd have known there'd never been a mummy. What? Now, look here, Barney Crawford. Prentice showed us a bill of sale for a sarcophagus, didn't he? I know all about that, but what I don't know... Well, a sarcophagus is a mummy case and nothing more. If there had been a mummy in it, the bill of sale would have said so. Oh, oh! so that's why you rushed to the library to find out about Ra Marduk. Ra who? Ra Marduk. I haven't got the slightest idea who you're talking about. Barney. Well, oh, that's better. I know him. The other guy never existed. He was never even born. <laughs> And so closes tonight's story, Murder Makes a Mummy. Stedman Coles wrote the radio script. Jock McGregor produced and directed for Roger Bauer. Tonight's cast included Lawson Zerby as Barney Crawford, Jane Harvin as Janice Turner, Al Hodge was Chief Crawford, Lon Clark was Robert Prentice, and Ted Osborne played Professor Morton. Oh, I beg your pardon. Hello, I hope I haven't kept you waiting. Yes, this is the crime club. I'm the librarian. Yes, come over a week from tonight. Good. We have the very exciting story of a vacancy that was filled by death. It's called Murder Rents a Room by Sarah Elizabeth Mason. In the meantime... Well, in the meantime, there is a new crime club book available this week and every week at bookstores everywhere. Yes, it's available now. Fine. And we look for you next week. Before the war, the United States was a fourth-rate military power. With a standing army of only 178,000 men, and that's smaller than Poland's, Romania's, or Turkey's. But the United States emerged from World War II in a position of world leadership, with all the many attendant responsibilities. In order to maintain the peace and bill for future security... The Congress has authorized the building of the largest peacetime army in our history, an all-volunteer army of over a million men. Today's regular army is one of the greatest scientific research organizations in the world. And because of its emphasis on scientific research and development, its men are highly skilled in radar, small arms, chemical warfare, photography, or any of the many other highly specialized services. Remember, the regular army man of today is not in the army because he couldn't get a job anywhere else. He is in because he has brains and ability and desires to profit by technical training that is second to none. This program came from New York. This is the Mutual Broadcasting System.